What is going on lads and welcome back to episode 8. So I'm not playing this match live. Uh, unfortunately I had an issue with my mic that wasn't recording live so hopefully everything should be good now but I wanted to take a look at this game because man I, these were just two of like the craziest matches like it was just absolutely super 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 crazy um, where it was just like so tight the defending the dribbling um, everything was very kind of like I don't know it was like kind of like really sticky man really sticky so i decided to just kind of do highlight packages of this it was like every literally every second pass or every third pass was like to the feet of an opponent i don't know what has happened with v1.1.2 i played a match or two with uh, episode seven and it was fine you know what i mean i actually had a good good time with it even with the issues i mean there's always issues um with th certain builds but everything just felt kind of sticky you'll see and it wasn't just for me either it was for him as well it was a very tight tense game but it just felt like that there was like I literally was concentrating so hard and fighting for so much control with the pad um, that it was like it was nearly stressing me out. You know what I mean? That the free flow and stuff wasn't as enjoyable. Like this is a brilliant chance here. Takes a touch. I mean, that's what I hate about the input delay sometimes. Just shoot for me. Like, you know what I mean? Just speed up the animation slightly. Here again, stupid pass straight to the feet of Van Dyke. It was happening for him as well. And you can see that there was gaps in the middle. I had to manually close every single gap. But I want your opinions, lads, of what you are thinking about V1.1.2 at the moment. Um, because to me, I feel that the passing is the biggest change in it. And this guy was an extremely aggressive player. We are going to be highlighting this video in another video of how to beat an aggressive player because I've got some good clips and good tips that people are asking me. How do I beat somebody that's just constantly abusing the shoulder charge and stuff like that? And the, the, the kind of the answer is patience, really. Patience and making your passes stick. But the problem sometimes is when you try to make your passes stick, if the game is sticky itself or if it's lethargic or if it's just not as sharp and as zippy as you're used to playing, it can be extremely difficult to change your play style at the drop of a hat. You have to try a lot of different things. And I was trying finesse shots. I was trying stunning shots. I was trying, you know, really tight dribbling. I was trying one-touch passing. I was trying to press him. I was trying to sit back. I was trying everything, but again, you'll see here, I was just creating chance after chance after chance on the wing. This guy was very aggressive centrally in the pitch, so I just kind of felt like if I was able to get a pass through, I would probably score, and you know, it might be decided by a goal or two, but again, this guy was a Division One player. He was actually a very, very decent player. He had some really good chances, but it was just one of these games where it's not lag. That's kind of the thing. It doesn't seem to be lag, so to speak. It seems to be more kind of like sticky. That's the way I would uh, describe it. Kind of like your players are sometimes going through quicksand or something like that, where it's not like noticeably, like you'll see a skill move there and you'll see the double touch and you'll see all the, the manual cancelling and the stop start and it looks very fluid. But then sometimes when you're actually passing the ball, you'll see passes like that, where it's like, it's nearly that he's trying to pass it to the defender rather than pass it to my player. It's 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 weird. And then you can see here again, you can see that the responsiveness looks really nice. I intercept it, try to get on the break again. He closes me down. I take a big, huge, heavy touch and then a terrible pass straight back to the opponent. And that's what I was saying, like, is that it's very, very difficult to play like this. It's not about, like, there again, like, just, like, that was a true ball. No attempt to true ball that at all. It was literally to the opponent's feet. And the last three times I've lost the ball, it's been from me passing it to the opponent's legs. And number four, are we going to get lucky with number four? No, we don't need to because he just puts his leg across. But again, you'll see there, he nearly gets a foot to it. I give a ball back in here. And again, it's the same thing where it's just kind of a delay in that there. But look, you will get games like this, lads. And I understand that when you're playing online. But the, the biggest thing I would say is that for me, I don't play six hours a day. I don't play, you know, 20 hours a week. Any game you see is me recording. Like you can see here, this is a lovely chance here. One of my best chances. But any game that you're seeing is me playing it. I don't play off, off not when I'm not recording. Um, or if I do, on the rare occasion like such as today, it's, it's more about to kind of like highlight the video um, and just kind of like talk about the video and like analyze certain parts. This was the goal. Beautiful little uh, finish into the bottom corner. I nearly had to walk it in and make sure that the pass is stuck. But yeah, every match that you're seeing is one that I'm recording for a, U for a YouTube video. So it's not like I'm playing five or six hours to practice and then putting on the matches that I'm like, you know, showing the best. Like every single game, win, lose or draw is going up. Um, and I, as I said, I'm not playing 20, 30 hours a week. 
I wish I had the time to do that and really improve and have like a wide variety of matches that I could, uh, that I could play. So obviously there is going to be people better at me that, uh, at the game, you know? Like here, again, maybe that should have been a penalty, maybe not, but this was just kind of conducive of the game the whole way through. I was getting chances, you'll see here. I'm going to be analysing this clip in a little bit as well of how to kind of like, you know, when you are coming up against an aggressive player, again, Romario takes a really heavy touch um, and then Messi's just standing up as if to say he's like, he just forgets that he's on a football pitch. But then when it plays well, you'll see there another dodgy pass, really, really bad pass. When it plays well, the game flows so beautifully and you can have a really nice battle of wits between you and your opponent. I mean, this guy, I had 68% percent possession. Sorry, lads. Um, but again, you'll see there that just the ball's bobbling in. I tried a couple of stunning passes. He gets another interception. I pass it back in. Romario's standing behind Van Dijk. It was just a crazy game, man. Really crazy game. Um, I tried to press him a little bit. It worked. It didn't work. That maybe should have been a free. And the gap through the middle appears. Beautiful ball up to Romario. He absolutely butcher bays me. Red card incoming for Roberto Carlos. No. Little bit of envelope. A brown envelope is going around to Carlos, to the ref. And uh, he just gets a yellow for that. So it was just one of these games, man. It was a crazy, crazy match. And I just wanted to highlight it to ask you guys what you thought and ask you guys what your opinions are on some of the gameplay stuff at the moment. Because when it plays well, I'm really enjoying myself. Like, I really enjoyed this game in terms of, like, the tactical battle, that it was a really tight, tense match. It could have been 5-5. It could have been 6-6. But there was good defending, even though we had a couple of issues with the response and stuff. Right the last of the deck, lads. I can't clear it here. I give it back out. It's coming in, 91 minutes on the clock, and I could just feel it coming. I feel it coming, but I could. I honestly could feel it coming, where he gets a chance back into Valverde, and thank God that that wasn't messy. He rattles it off the post. He probably deserved an equalizer, but yeah, it was a crazy match, man. You can see there all the clips are there, but it is very hard, and I've kind of reiterated that over the last couple of weeks, that it's very hard to go from playing your fluid like, I play out wide. I play out wide. I play possession. I, like, make sure that my passes stick. But sometimes when you're doing everything the way that you used to do it a week previous and it's not working, it can just kind of, like, completely, like, turn your game around or completely turn your game upside down, your play style upside down. And especially, obviously, I'm missing Vieira, Maldini, Davies from this squad. I don't have my best squad out. I'm using this past and present squad. This guy was playing a 5-2-1-2, so I knew it was going to be tactically... Uh, tough. He did have a lesser team strength than me, an 85 team style, play style. I needed to get off to a good start. And this game, lads, straight from the off, four or five minutes on the clock, I stringed together a couple of passes. I was intercepting him. I felt that the responsiveness was there. I felt that the passing was zippy. I felt that everything, like the dribbling and stuff, was zippy. You can see there, a lovely little reverse pass in, into Pedri, turn and bang. And it just felt like a different game, man. It just felt like it was a different connection. It felt like I was able to like turn on a sixpence with my players that should be able to turn on a sixpence. I get that you come up against top class players sometimes that are better than you and they put you under savage pressure. But not being able to pass the ball is not somebody putting you under savage pressure, in my opinion. Yeah, they can press you and they can be able to like intercept the ball and they can close off passing lanes and stuff. But that's, there's nothing really that you can do if you press true ball and he doesn't do a true ball. He just passes it straight to the opponent. So... I just wanted to kind of highlight this while still be on our journey in the divisions and we are going to be flying up the divisions hopefully if we get a win here but again I was just being patient but everything was sticking you'll see here Romario like the little cancel the stunning shot and then that would have been an absolute bullet of a shot in there and usually when I'm struggling I kind of hold possession more than I normally would I don't take as many risks because I'm thinking right I want to stay solid at the back I want Buki at the back to be getting a load of chances you'll see here. I don't take the first chance. I recycle it. He's pressing me. Lovely ball into Neymar. That just would not have been possible in the last match that I played. That type of pass. It's just a typical true ball. Perfectly into the path of Romario. In the last game, I wouldn't have been able to buy a pass like that. So that's what I'm saying. That it's very hard when you play like 70, 80 matches. And then it's like, okay, well this isn't working anymore. Or that's not working anymore. Or this isn't going to be something that... Um, that is like possible in this match when you're breaking down the gameplay now he does tap out obviously which i don't mind it saves me the time of playing but just wanted to bring you this episode lads episode eight of dream team chronicles we do go marching up the divisions the game was over at half time 
Pedri's on the ground there giving out, but he won't be giving out in a minute when he sees our place in the division rankings. But lovely finish from Romario. Look at that. I mean, I always try to take a first touch. I know some people don't, but I always try to take a first touch with the top class players because they can change direction and change angle to be ready to explode away with acceleration. So I do always try to do that. I will be bringing a tutorial, lads, on how to beat a very attacking player. I've seen more and more people play formations like 4-2-4 and literally just spam the you know teammate press and the shoulder charge and the refs sometimes don't call it. So I will be doing a video on that and then I'm going to be doing a video on how to attack like more effectively, more efficiently. And as I said, I've tested all of these with 100 plus matches and it does, you know, you need to test stuff online in my personal opinion because some things don't work offline. But yeah, we are there in Division 4. We need, what, four more points to get up the division. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's something a little bit different. I hope you guys are enjoying Dream Team Chronicles as a whole. Let me know what you thought about this episode, lads. As I said, it is something different. Don't forget to subscribe. Huge thanks to all you guys supporting the content right now. Nearly at 16,000 subs, which is incredible. Um, we'll have a giveaway at 20,000 subs, I think, hopefully. Um, and yeah, that's it for me, lads. I'll be back quite soon. Peace.